Hello, and welcome to part one of Intonation and the Floyd Rose Tremolo. This is a three-part series of which I will be discussing some of the pros and cons of trying to set the intonation on a Floyd Rose Tremolo. At the end of part three, hopefully the information that is posted in these videos will help someone in setting the intonation on their guitars using a Floyd Rose tremolo. So enjoy and sit back, soak it all in. You might learn something. Peace. Okay, the guitar we're going to be adjusting the intonation on is my Squire Stage Master built by Fender that I had modified and put in active pickups. Now I did notice when I put in the active pickups, they're EMGs, I did lose some of the harmonics and I kept scratching my head going, well, why? So I checked around, went to Floyd Rose's website, found out that uh, Basically, anything you do can change the intonation on your guitar, such as changing the string size will change the intonation on your guitar. Changing the pickups will change the intonation on your guitar. Tuning down, such as I do, will change the intonation on your guitar. Pretty much everything. Heat, humidity, little warp in the neck almost anything will affect it now this particular guitar I've played around with the intonation and tried to adjust it the best I could with my boss tuner which some of you guys probably can do this by ear I am partially tone deaf, so uh, I need the tuner. And this particular tuner, I like it a lot because it actually has a pitch control. I can set the pitch at any space I want. But we'll get in more into that in part two. So back to the guitar. This guitar I have set at a 435 pitch, which is definitely tuned down. I'm also running 8s for strings, which with it being tuned down, the Floyd Road adjusted on the spring tension and 8s makes it extremely easy to play and you can bend strings real easy. Only problem with this is when I got to setting the intonation, <laughs> I found that on the saddle position these right here saddles when you tune down you have to move those saddles further back to get your intonation again now at a 435 pitch might be a little hard for you to see uh, let's just take a little zoom in here you can see what I'm talking about so a 435 pitch I have moved that saddle back as far as I humanly can and my intonation still off so if you tune down keep in mind you only got so much space to work with before your saddles start hitting and binding and that's exactly what happened to me now shadows you notice here for your adjustment they look a little crooked <laughs> and again that's because I ran out of space when I was moving the saddles so that's not a good thing but again we'll get more into that into part two when uh, we actually start using the tuner and you can see exactly what uh, I'm talking about as far as saddle position 
All right, one other thing we're going to cover, uh, just a quick note here, is the springs on your Floyd Rose Tremolo. Uh, there's a reason that we're covering this today. Um, I want to make sure everybody out there that watches this realizes something. The spring position on your guitar is very important. And it's very important for a reason, and that reason is those springs on your guitar are currently broken for the position they are in. Meaning that at certain parts of the Floyd Rose Tremolo, uh, for instance, your number one spring here, that spring is more stretched because it has more tension on it because of the size of the string. So before you ever remove your springs, number their position or you can letter them or color code them however you want to do it. But it's very important that you do that so when you put the springs back in you're going to have a whole lot less adjustment to deal with as far as tuning and then readjusting the spring tension and so forth. So if you just remember where the springs are and you get them back in the same location, you're not going to have a problem. It makes your life a lot easier. Now the, the big reason I'm showing you this is because when we get into part two and I start doing adjustments, and I discovered this the hard way uh, when I set the intonation on this guitar initially, Basically, I had to find something to jam in this slot here and to jam right in here to keep the Floyd Rose from moving. That made it very difficult considering yeah, I loosened the string and it, this shifts just that little bit and then what I had in here popped out and it, it was a hassle. So realistically, what I'm doing in part two which I'm not going to do a video on it, I'm just going to switch it out and that way when we're adjusting the uh, intonation and the saddle position this will be stationary so it won't move on me make it a lot easier but the reason that we're doing this today is I'm going to show you what we're going to be what I'm doing I should say is I'm going to be installing the all parts trim no trim unit. It's the pin type unit and essentially, and it's a little hard to see, but it uh, pretty much comes with everything. You have to use your springs and again we have numbered the springs so one, two, three. We know exactly where they are. Uh, the trim no trim unit it allows me to remove this piece here and the kit actually has a new piece in it that the locking bar ties to. So that's kind of a nice thing. So we're going to end up replacing this here and then that bar unit is going to slide right in between these two strings and go right into this hole right here and I'm going to be able to adjust or lock the uh, tremolo. So when we're adjusting the intonation on the saddles. I can move the saddles back and forth and not have to worry about the tremolo moving. So there's nothing worse than having something in there and all of a sudden, guess what? It pops right out. And then you got to start all over again. Now, as I said, I discovered this the hard way the first time around when I set it for the 435 pitch. Don't want to go that route again. So, for part two, I'm already going to have this installed and have it locked. Now you can pick these up, well, where I got mine, is at uh, musiciansfriends.com. And it's about 50 bucks, but the amount of time it's going to save you and the aggravation of having to try to find something to block in there, this little unit right here will pay for itself in the long run easily. And with that said, I think that's the end of part one. And again, 
Springs cannot say enough about numbering them, color coding them, or something. Get their exact position back in when you put it back together, if you ever have to pull them off. So there you go. Uh, I will see you around again on part two. I hope you enjoyed part one, and uh, we'll definitely be getting a little deeper into it in part two. All right, peace to all. And see you next time around.